Welcome back everyone. Hope you've been having a fantastic Eyes on Dry Eye. I know I've been enjoying it. It feels good to be coming to the end of the first day. The pressure is off, but we're having so much fun. I think we might have just crossed 500,000 minutes of education consumed, which is so motivating and inspiring in a way. So thank you everyone for the support at this event. Uh, I'm super excited to bring on my next guest who I haven't seen in so long, Aziz Motiwala, Chief Commercial Officer at Tarsus. Let's bring him on. What's going on, my friend? Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. You enjoying the show? It's been fantastic. Really impressive. I think I heard the stats: six thousand registrations, and you just said almost half a million uh, uh, minutes. That's that's yeah. really impressive. Yeah, thank you. Couldn't do it without you guys. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I think we. It's it's funny because registrations keep trickling in as folks are hearing more, and so. It's been an incredible event. Uh, we're really, really excited, obviously. So, you know, your history in dry eye goes way back, and, you know, you're focused now on Demodex blepharitis. And, and I'm really curious to see, you know, kind of the parallels. You've got a history in understanding dry eye in a deep, deep way, and um, how that is now, uh, how, how you're bringing that into your focus on Demodex blepharitis. Tell me as much as I'm all ears. That's great. Um, when I started talking to the Tarsus team about joining, the first thing that stood out to me is the work on Demodex blepharitis is so analogous mm -hmm. to what we saw in dry eye. You have a large patient population that's suffering significant symptomatology, significant impact on their disease, on their daily living. And much like dry eye, before there was a good solution available, these patients were often going undiagnosed. They're missed in the practice because there's no good solution. Mm -hmm. And we see the same thing with Demodex blepharitis, where you've got a large patient population. A lot of these patients are not being identified in the practice or they're being misdiagnosed today, primarily because there's not a good answer to solve the problem today. So we see a significant opportunity to help these patients. I think there's also some differences that actually make Demodex blepharitis really exciting. One of them is the fact that with Demodex blepharitis, we can go after a very specific root cause of the disease. If you compare and contrast this with dry eye, Dry is a multifactorial disease. We're looking at attacking different inflammatory pathways. But with Demodex blepharitis, it's actually pretty straightforward. We're going after the Demodex mite, the root cause of the disease. Yeah. The other significant advantage is with Demodex blepharitis, we have an objective and pathognomonic sign of disease, and that's the cholerets. Mm -hmm. The cholerets, the waxy cylindrical dandruff that sits at the base of the lash. It's a very straightforward way in which physicians can identify the patients and make that diagnostic climb much easier once we have a great solution. Yeah, and, and that's it's, it just seems to be talking talked about more and more and more, which is great. I mean, we want that uh, that focus on it, and it's it's I'm, I'm loving that it's coming up as a topic uh, at this particular event. So so tell us more about Demodex blepharitis in general. Um, you know, prevalence specifically, and you know, impact on patients. Would love to hear more. Yeah, great. And, and as you mentioned, it's becoming more and more of a topic. We've done a lot of work here. Mm -hmm. um, about eighty percent of the literature around Demodex blepharitis has actually been published just in the last five years. Right. So it is an area that the interest is growing, and we're continuing to learn a lot. And one of the areas we really invested some time and effort to learn is how significant this problem is. And what we found is that this disease affects up to twenty-five million Americans. If you looked in literature historically, it said, "Okay, there's twenty million blepharitis cases in the U.S." About half of them have Demodex, so you've got about 9 million patients. But once we started talking to clinicians and thought leaders, what we heard very clearly is, I actually see this in my practice way more frequently than what most people think. So we actually commissioned a study. This uh, study is the Titan study that was recently completed, and actually the results of this will be presented in the summer at the ASKERS meeting. And this study looked at over a thousand patients coming into seven different clinics across the U.S., both ophthalmology and optometry. And we asked these clinicians to look for the presence of cholerets on a wide array of patients, consecutive patients coming in the door. So they could have been contact lens patients, they could have been dry eye patients, pre-cataract patients, you name it. And what we found is 58% of these patients presented with cholerets. And remember, cholerets is a pathognomonic sign of a Demodex infestation. So 58% of these patients have a Demodex infestation. There's about 45 million unique visits to the eye doctor every year. So that leaves you with a true in-office, real-world prevalence of about 25 million patients. And these are patients that are experiencing redness, itchiness, irritated eyelids, misdirected or lost lashes, 
and oftentimes they're suffering for a long time. And, and these are patients that are very prevalent in the practice. They're your dry eye patients, your contact lens intolerant patients, uh, your cataract patients. So lots of significant patient populations within the practice that are suffering. And if we start to look more closely, we see that this is far more prevalent than what many might have thought before. Yeah, this is a really impactful slide. I'm actually pretty blown away by seeing these numbers you know, right here, it's, a, it's, it's absolutely surprising. And, and where, where can we find these patients? I mean, this is a large number. And I think you're just starting to graze the surface here. So where can we find them? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great point. And, you know, one of the things we learned from the, the Titan study, a lot of the investigators in the study, a lot of them said, well, I probably think maybe it's about 15% of the population or 20% of my patients may have this. And what we asked them to do is, well, really take a close look at the eyelids, right? And the idea of examining the eyelid and looking proactively for this. And what we found is when you look proactively at the lid, it tells a very compelling story. And this visual is really great, right? It shows oh, yeah. you what you might see at the slit lamp when you're looking at the eye head on, the eyes open and the eye looks pretty normal. But the second you ask the patient to look down and you see the upper lid, it tells a very different story. Yeah. So one of the things we've been talking to clinicians and thought leaders about is this idea of really ensuring that we're looking at the eyelid because the eyelid is a foundational component of ocular health. And if we start with the eyelid, we may be able to identify a very significant prevalent problem that hopefully with the work we're doing at Tarsus, we'll be able to address in a very elegant way, hopefully soon. Yeah, no, I really like that. And it seems that so much of everything at this show, like all of these treatments and diag whether it's treatments or diagnosis, it, it, everything leans upon each other. So everything has a kind of a place in this multifactorial disease, right? And this is such a missing piece. So you must be super excited to just be, you know, in the thick of it involved. This is going to be really exciting. It, it is really exciting. And, and what's really energizing is when you talk to folks like yourself, you talk to other clinicians, when you ask them to look for this, it doesn't disappoint. It's there. And it, it's really energizing when you are able to provide a, a level of education around prevalence, around how we can help more patients. And you see some of the top clinicians in the country have a light bulb moment around the fact that I've been missing this. Yeah. A unique opportunity. I mean, Matt, that, that's what really gets me excited about this is that this is something we're covering and we're learning about together and we're gonna work together to solve this. Yeah, no, no, it's the light bulb moment is key. So what is TPO3 and how can it help these patients with demodex blepharitis this is, this is the exciting part. Tell us more. All right. So TPO3 is our lead investigational drug that we're exploring for demodex blepharitis. It is an ophthalmic formulation of a drug called Lodolaner. And Lodolaner is a potent, non-competitive antagonist of the parasite gamma chloride channel. What it does is essentially paralyzes the mites, and it's specific to paralyzing the mites. It's interesting because the molecule is highly lipophilic, which we actually believe may help it get to the sebum that's in the lash follicles and that's where the mites reside. So we're actually able to get right to where the mite is and, and eradicate the mite. We've actually examined TPO3 across four phase two studies with very consistent safety and efficacy results. And now we've moved the drug into our pivotal studies, Saturn 1 and Saturn 2. Saturn 1, we just completed enrollment in and we're planning on having the top line released over the summer. And Saturn 2 is scheduled to start enrollment here in the next few weeks within the second quarter. Ooh, coming up. It's coming up soon. There's going to be a lot, a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, there's not going to be a doc out there that's not excited for something like this. I can, I can already hear it at next year's Eyes on Dry Eye. This is going to be an exciting topic. Uh, what else is in the clinical pipeline and uh, what's next? Yeah, so from a pipeline perspective, we are looking at several different applications of Lodolaner. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at some things in dermatology. We're also looking at systemic use for the prevention of Lyme and malaria. Mm. But uh, when we talk about TPO3 and demodex blepharitis, which I'm sure this audience is mostly excited about, um, we are looking at, again, initiating the Saturn II trial here in the coming weeks of the second quarter. Um, we're looking at uh, reading out the Saturn I data over the summer. And then we're also looking at TPO3 for other ocular conditions. We're actually going to be doing a phase two study later this year, examining the effect on meibomian gland disease. And I'm sure many of the folks here know that Demodex is actually implicated in meibomian gland disease as well. It's the Demodex brevis mite that can burrow into the meibomian glands, feed off those rich oils, and may have a role 
in obstruction and inflammation of those glands. So we're really thrilled to be able to examine uh, a potential treatment for one of the most common causes of dry eye as well. So um, more to come on that, but uh, certainly another area of focus, um, if you will, you know, we think that the, the lids are an incredibly important part of ocular health. So first starting with Demodex blepharitis and then eventually being able to potentially go into to my bone gland disease as well. That's going to be big. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of all these funny jokes of Demodex not paying rent in my, my bone and glands. You got to get out of there or else, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'll, we'll probably figure something a little more elegant than <laughs> the uh, commercials, but um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it, you know, I think it's really relevant, right? I mean, this is going to be a very compelling message for patients as well as clinicians. We're going to be able to get a lot of patients in the practice that are going to want to have their eyelids screened and want this problem solved. And I do have a, a really great solution for clinicians to make a big difference here. Yeah, no, and I think there's just something so important about being able to physically see Demodex blepharitis and blepharitis and cholerets and how a treatment plan, you know, because with regular dry eyes, sometimes you're not, you're just feeling it. You're not seeing it and being able to see it and see the removal of it is, is gratifying for the doctor and the patient. It's just like, oh, not only can I feel it, but I can see it. You know, it's really spot on in, in early days and talking to some of the thought leaders we've been working with, I, I think this has the potential to really provide a clinician a, a wow effect where you can really see a problem and then potentially have a solution that, that could be very visual as well, right? Uh, you know, getting rid of the cholerets, getting rid of the mites. Uh, it's a very compelling visual story. Um, so we see that as an opportunity to really educate around the prevalence have patients come in, have clinicians be able to find this relatively easily compared to a lot of other ocular disease and, and really provide a compelling solution for their patients. That's, that's a great point, Matt. Yeah, I was reading prior, just preparing for everything that Tarsus recently uh, had a great deal in China. How does that factor into your plans? Absolutely, yeah, China has uh, been on our radar. It's the second largest healthcare market in the world. And our goal is to be able to help as many people as possible. And this opens the doors for us to be able to go to that second largest market where you've got potentially up to 40 million Demodex blepharitis patients, 70 million myeloma gland disease patients. So a large market where we can help many, many patients. Uh, and you know we've got a great partner in Leon Bio. And when you look at that market and the work we've done initially in, in structuring that deal, um, the current management is remarkably similar to what we see in the US. So there's a significant need there as well. So we're really focused on bringing this innovation to market and bringing it globally. We have global rights to Lotto Lantern and everything we're doing, we're doing with a very broad eye in terms of helping as many people as possible. That's awesome. Well, the only way you can help them is with us to help you. So, you know, if there's a message to the ODs attending the show or that are going to be watching this, you know, how can the average OD, the average ophthalmologist uh, help out in, and what can we do? Yeah, so I'll, I'll answer that with a quote from one of my favorite movies, Jerry Maguire, help me help you. Yeah. Uh, help us by giving us great feedback giving us insights and ideas. Um, I think that that's the best way we can continue to, to develop and, and have the right plans to commercialize this drug um, so that we can best serve the community, the, the optometric community, the eye care community as a whole. Uh, so we're always open to feedback and ideas. We love to hear from thought leaders, clinicians, folks like the folks that are taking part in this conference. We, we love to hear the perspective of what's going on. Um, and you know, I always tell people, I said, if you really want to really dig into this, start to look, you won't be disappointed. Start to look at the upper lids and, and really start to understand how prevalent this is, what impact it's having on your patients, because there's gonna be a lot of work that's gonna to need to be done in terms of educating the broader community around the prevalence and impact of this. So let's start to build that knowledge base so that when we have a solution, we can effectively educate our colleagues and make a big difference for these patients. Yeah, no, it's super solid sound advice, and I hope that uh, those listening take it for sure. Um, before we close out, any other closing thoughts? Anything you want to add? Any questions for me? I don't know how much I can answer, but. <laughs> oh, it's great. Yeah, congratulations on a great conference. And yeah, as you mentioned, it's been a little while since you and I were able to connect, but yeah. uh, thrilled to see you. Thrilled to be back in the eye care space. It's been so fun to connect with so many of my colleagues here in optometry. And, so many just great people and, and working so hard on, on making such a big difference. So really thrilled to be part of it and really thrilled to be included and would ask that uh, if anybody wants to, to keep in touch or, or stay abreast of what's going on at Tarsus, you can follow us online uh, at TarsusRx on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, we'll keep you posted and we look forward to hearing from all of you. And hopefully, Matt, we can do this live soon yeah. and we can get together and exchange a high five or a fist bump very soon. And 
and talk shop, but it's great to see you and, and really glad that we were able to take part today. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for your support for sure. It's it's absolutely great to have you back in the eye care space and you chose, of, of all the eye care spaces, dry eye, obviously we're big on it, um, but you guys are going to have an incred- incredibly successful future. There's no doubt about it. And yeah, for everyone watching, go enjoy the rest of the tracks out there. We'll be doing closing remarks a little bit later on. Check out the conference bag where we've got the 2021 dry eye report, uh, other unique giveaways, and just enjoy the show. Have a good time. And thank you, Aziz. I appreciate it, man. Chat with you soon. Great. Have a great meeting, everyone. You too. Bye-bye.